na ora taya ay maharibins ta iram di ira hado giwete tano. 36. That's the number we've gotten at already. The wheels of the eyeless train keep going round and round. Now, I do realize that I've been shoving a lot of grammar down your throats lately. And while they say you can't have enough of a good thing, I think you deserve a breather. Give all the grammar a bit of time to sink in and digest. Also, I finally found a way to make these videos with a better resolution, so nothing but good news. On today's menu, a light and easy topic. Family. We'll go over the different words that exist to describe relatives and family members in Eilis. So, a small vocabulary lesson, nothing too strenuous for the brain. To kick off this topic, we'll need the protagonist of our episode, the root word ue. It logically means family or kinship. Ue is a root word of the second class, and so it can bind to any of the five qualifier suffixes ora, ira, era, aira, or ara. Now, the role that the qualifiers play in combination with the root word ue is a bit unusual. The added meaning of the qualifiers is different for the root word ue than it is for other root words, which is why I decided to cover it in a separate video. With ue, the addition of a qualifier makes the root word refer to a generation. The middle qualifier, era, refers to the same generation, one's own generation. Ira is the older generation, the generation of one's parents. Ora refers to two generations up, the generation of grandparents. The remaining qualifiers mean the same, but for younger generations. Words with aira refer to the generation of children, and ara refers to two generations down, grandchildren. Now, the Alice view on words for family members is egocentric, like most languages in the world, by the way. This means that the words that family members get depend on a central point, the ego. It's from the ego that we decide which person is designated as father, mother, siblings, grandparents, aunts, uncles, etc. This is not universal though. Some languages classify family members from a point of view of the family's householder, pater familias kind of structure, which means that if that person comes to pass away, the words used to describe family members with all change. Such languages would have words that can be interpreted not like aunt or uncle, for example, but rather the oldest male in line, or something like that. Anyway, that's not applicable. Eilis follows the Western, egocentric view on family. Each Eilis word for a relative or family member consists of a standard of three components. In the middle, there is ue, and at the end, we have a qualifier that indicates a generation. The first component of such a word is one of three gender root words, ma for male, ni for female, and for both, either, or unspecified. As such, just like some other vocabulary units, like for example the color system, we can present the words for family members in a grid with two variables, gender and generation. We'll start with the same generation, era. Maue era is the closest male family member in the same generation as yourself, a brother. And, logically, Ni ue era is the female equivalent, your sister. Te ue era is a gender unspecified word, a sibling. Since all words in Ailis can be either singular or plural, these three words can also mean brothers, sisters, or siblings in general. Then, we'll look at the words for the generation older than yourself. Ma ue ira is your father. Ni ue ira is your mother and te ue ira can be used for either parent or, again, the plural parents. Another generation up, same structure, same pattern. Ma ue ora, ni ue ora, te ue ora. Grandfather, grandmother, grandparent, or parents. Then, we'll look at the younger generation. Ma ue aira, a son. Ni ue aira, a daughter. Te ue aira, a child or children. And the final category, I guess no one will be surprised. Maue ara, ni ue ara, te ue ara. Grandson, granddaughter, grandchildren. So with this basic structure, you have 15 words to describe your immediate family members with. Now, we can use the referent marker, fai, discussed in among others video 13, to do some interesting things. We can describe family members with more precision. For example, Ni ue ira fai ni ue ira. Literally, 
mother of mother. This is also your grandmother, but logically, specifically your grandmother on mother's side. In analogy, ma ue ira fai ni ue ira is your grandfather on mother's side. Ni ue ira fai ma ue ira is your grandmother on father's side, etc. With the same pattern, you can also use fai to create words for relatives outside your immediate family. For example, ni ue era fai te ue ira is the sister of one of your parents, an aunt. The English word aunt can refer to more than one person. You can have more than one aunt. Just a little change of a gender particle allows you to narrow the word down. Ni ue era fai ma ue ira would then be an aunt, specifically on your dad's side of the family. Here's another one. Ni ue aira fai ni ue era is the daughter of your sister. This is your niece. But why stop at one referent? Have a look at ni ue aira fai te ue era fai ni ue ira to describe the daughter of a sibling of your mother. This is any of your cousins, specifically female cousins on mother's side. Now, a word like this is getting pretty damn long to be practical. This is why it's common to just string together liska the same way we can do with the numbers, personal pronouns and colors, among others, and turn this word into ni ue ai e ira, a short form of saying daughter of sibling of parent, a female cousin. This might be less specific, still it's more specific than the English word cousin, because the word cousin doesn't specify a gender, it could be either. People can have many cousins and usually, when you want to specify which one you're talking about, you'll just start saying their names. For example, Ni ue ai e ira re Katie. My cousin Katie. Okay? Now, let's talk about siblings specifically. This is you. Suppose you are the middle child of three. So you have an older sibling and a younger one. Which word would you use if you're talking about these siblings? Well, the older sibling would simply be called, literally, old sibling. Te ue era ak ira as. It should go without saying that you can change the root word te if you want to refer specifically to an older sister or brother. In analogy, your younger sibling is te ue era ak aira as, the young sibling. Now, suppose you are the youngest sibling of three. This is you. How would you specify which one you're talking about now? Well, your oldest sibling becomes the very old sibling. Te ue era ak ora as. The sibling in the middle becomes te ue era ak ira as. Obviously, this works the same with younger siblings. Let's push the boundaries. Say you have three older siblings. Jeez, it's getting a bit cramped up in here. Anyway, your oldest sibling is te ue era ak ora as. So, what do you call the second oldest sibling then? Well, Liska magic. Te ue era ak i ora as. Now everybody is happy. Whee! You can combine Liska indefinitely this way. Say you come from an, <clears throat> let's call it a productive family, you will have a word to describe each sibling by. There is something else I'd like to show you while we're on the topic of family. It already passed by in the video about the powerhouses of the lexicon. More specifically, where I told you that you can use the root word de to describe in-laws or stepfamily. For example, you can create the word ma ue era de, which can mean brother-in-law. Now, the word brother-in-law can refer to two different types of people. Either a brother of your spouse, or option number two, the husband of one of your siblings. In Ailis, the meaning of the word ma ue era de is even broader. It can also mean stepbrother or even half-brother. Adding the root word de to any of the words we've seen so far in this video makes the word refer to any kind of family that's not your biological family, but rather the family you acquire as a consequence of social constructions, such as marriage. Therefore, Alice also regards a stepbrother as literally a brother-in-law. Come to think of it, you could technically even use the word ma ue era de for an adopted brother. So, a word like ma ue era de could refer to people that have different kinds of relationships to you, just like the word brother-in-law does. If we wish to specify, you could go about it in a literal way like we've seen before. To create the word for spouse in Ailis, we start with te oai ara. I love the meaning of this word because just like anoai ara, which means permanent place, 
and which we use to refer to your house or your home, the word te o ai ara means permanent person. It means either partner or stable companion. It could also be used to describe a very close friend. But if you add the root word de to it, it's signed into law, your legal spouse. And to refer to their brother, we use the same construction with vai, like we discussed before. The other type of brother-in-law, the husband of one of your siblings, is formed just the same way. Ma o ai ara de is a male legal partner, vai te ue era of a sibling. If you want to specify that you're talking about a stepbrother rather than a brother-in-law, you could call him son of step parent. Ma ue aira vai te ue ira de, the biological son of a non-biological but legal parent. Half brother finally can be described like son of parent. Ma ue aira vai te ue ira. Now your biological brother is obviously also the son of your parents. However, we do already have a simpler word for that. So if we describe a person as the son of my parent, then that implies that there's something odd going on. Otherwise, you just say brother, right? But if context makes it clear whom you're talking about, or it's otherwise not relevant to be specific, a word such as ma ue era de can be used to refer to any of these kinds of family relationships, or, as I said, perhaps a legally adopted brother. A final thing I'd like to say about this topic, don't worry, it'll be quick, is about terms of endearment. In Ailis, it is common to affectionately address any of your relatives as either ni ue if they're female or ma ue if they're male. As such, it could mean mom or mommy if a child says it to their mother. It could mean something like sis rather than sister, grandma or granny if children address their grandmother, or a mother might as well call her daughter ni ue, little girl, my baby girl, etc. Analogously, ma ue could mean dad, daddy, bro, grandpa, or again a parent talking to their son, little fella, sport, something like that. It is even more common to prefix the liska e to either of these words. This turns the first component into a personal pronoun. Eni for female you, ema for male you. So calling one of your relatives either eni ue or ema ue is considered to be an affectionate, loving way of addressing them. And that covers the topic of family and relatives, I think. An easy lesson, right? I don't know yet what the next video will be about. I guess we'll have to find out together. Will you tune in? I hope so. Thanks for watching. Na ora!